Android tablets are a really popular and inexpensive way to create a central wall panel for your smart home that's useful for providing controls for guests or displaying useful information at a glance. I even made one two years ago now using this tablet that I still get comments on to this day asking about the software and also the automations that I do with it. So today I want to show you how to take any Android tablet and turn it into a wall panel for your smart home. The software that's used for my wall panel is called Fully Kiosk. Fully Kiosk is a really cool app for Android that can turn a regular tablet like my Samsung Galaxy Tab into a fully fledged wall panel. And it's got tons of options and advanced features for really granular control from using the camera for motion detection to remotely loading URLs, remote management, kiosk mode, and so much more. The first thing we're going to do is to create a dedicated user for our wall panel inside of Home Assistant to help restrict access if we need to, since the tablet will be out in an accessible area. Head over to settings and then people and hit the users tab and then add a new user, setting a password and you will probably want to only allow login from local network and leave the administrator option unticked. Next, I would also recommend installing the Home Assistant Companion app too on your tablet. It's not needed for Fully Kiosk since it has its own browser and its web page built in, but it does give us access to additional sensors if we need it, plus better support for notifications and things like that. Follow through the steps to log in to the Companion app just like you've done in the past for any mobile device. Then head over to the Play Store and search for Fully Kiosk Browser. You will see a couple of different Fully Kiosk apps which do different things, but it's the Fully Kiosk Browser app we are interested in. Once installed, you will be asked to enter a start URL, and the start URL is the URL that will be opened anytime the app launches for the first time, or it can also be triggered remotely from inside of Home Assistant. So we will want to set this as our Home Assistant dashboard. Go ahead and enter the URL of your Home Assistant into the box, including any port numbers. I would recommend leaving full screen on, but the action and address bar off. And once you hit start, you will need to log in remembering to use the special account you created earlier. To access the settings of Fully Kiosk, swipe in from the left hand side. You'll notice that it mentions a plus license here. So Fully Kiosk is free to use, however the Plus license gets you access to some additional advanced features which we are going to need for this guide. The real cool thing is, is that you can try out all of these features without getting the license, it just adds a little watermark to the corner of your screen. So you can try out everything from this guide and see if it works for you before getting the paid version. I would really recommend the paid version if you like it. It's only eight euros for a full permanent license for a device that is yours to keep forever. So really inexpensive and you get all of those additional features without the watermark, so definitely recommend it. We're going to want to configure some of the settings now of which there is a huge list of options, so it can be a little overwhelming, but fear not, I will show you exactly which ones you need to change. First, head over into web browser settings and enable pull to refresh, which lets you refresh the page by pulling down from the top of the screen, which can be really useful. Next, head into device management and make sure unlock screen is enabled along with keep screen on. This will prevent the lock screen from showing, which is a little bit annoying for a wall tablet. Finally, enable launch on boot, which will make sure that even if the tablet restarts, that Fully Kiosk will launch when it boots back. Head to Remote Administration and hit the Enable button, which will unlock the rest of the options. Then go in and set an admin password, which should be a secure one. This password will be used later to connect Home Assistant through the Fully integration, so make sure and take a note of it. Next, make sure that Remote Admin from Local Network is enabled. Hit the Back button and then force close the app and reopen it. And when it reopens, it's gonna ask for a bunch of new permissions in order to activate the device management and remote administration stuff. So make sure to allow those permissions and then hit activate to enable device management once again. That's going to take you into a further permission tab, depending on your version of Android and ask to enable some further admin permissions. Activate the permission, hit the back button and it'll ask for a new permission just keep doing that until all of the permissions have been accepted. Finally, you should land at the start URL again. 
Once in Home Assistant, head over to Settings, Devices and Services and add a new integration, searching for the Fully Kiosk integration. We're going to be using the native Home Assistant integration for this video, which is an official integration now, meaning it's the best supported one. There's also a community integration available through Hacks, which I used to use before, before the native one was added, and that is also an option, but the native one has pretty much everything I need it to do, so I switched over to using that one. Enter the IP address of your tablet into the box, and you can find the IP of your device by going into Wi-Fi settings, opening advanced settings and scrolling down. Then enter the password that you created earlier and hit finish. Now if you head into the device, you'll have a bunch of new sensors and controls that you can use, including loading the start URL, turning the screen on and off, screen brightness, kiosk lock, motion detection, battery information and more, which is great for using in your automations. And speaking of automations, let's create a couple of automations now. You may remember back when I first made my wall tablet, I used a smart plug attached to the charger so that the battery wasn't continuously charging and causing it to bloat, which you definitely don't want to happen. So let's recreate that automation first. Head over to settings, automations and create a new automation. And for the trigger for this automation, I'm going to select numeric state and then as the entity, I want to select the battery of my wall panel, which you can get through the mobile app sensor or through the fully kiosk app sensor, both work the exact same. Then in the box that says below, I'm going to enter 20, so that my automation is triggered whenever the battery percentage goes below 20%. Then hit the three dots on the trigger and hit edit ID and name it below. Next, add a second trigger with the same numeric state, but this time we're going to set the above field to be 80% and we will edit the ID to be above. This means that our automation will trigger when the battery percentage either goes below 20% or above 80%. Next, under the action section, select choose from the dropdown and in the option one, add a condition and select triggered by and choose below, which references the 20% trigger that we set above. In the action for option one, select call service, type switch.turn on, and then select the smart plug connected to the wall panels charger. Then repeat the same steps for option two, but this time select the above trigger as the condition and switch.turn off for the action, so that the plug automatically switches off when the battery is above 80%. This will keep our battery nice and fresh by keeping it between 20% and 80% automatically. The next automation we can create is to turn our screen on and off whenever there is motion detected using the screen controls. Much of this automation is the same as the previous one to be honest, so I won't spend too much time on this one, but essentially as a trigger, you want to create a state for your motion sensor turning on and again, edit the trigger ID to read motion on, then create another trigger for motion off. Then under the action section, we do the same again by selecting choose, setting the condition for option one to be the motion on trigger. Then under the action section, select call service, select switch.turn on, and then select the wall panel screen entity. Repeat the same for option two, but this time use the switch.turn off for no motion detected. Our final automation lets us bring up a doorbell camera on the tablet after a doorbell button is pressed so that you can see the screen before you get to the door to give you a little heads up. To do this, we first need to create a page on our dashboard with the camera on it and nothing else. So create a new view on your dashboard and change the view type to panel and hit save. Then add a card, selecting the picture entity card, and in the entity box, select the camera you want to display, remove the image path, and then select the camera again under the camera entity section. Set the view to be live, and then hit save. You'll notice that because we set the view to panel mode, the card fills the entire dashboard, which is what we want. Before you leave, grab the URL of your dashboard and copy it. Create a new automation and in the trigger section, select state from the dropdown and point this to your entity that contains your doorbell button press. 
For example, I'm using the Reolink video doorbell, which gives me a binary sensor for the doorbell button, so I will select that. Then in the action section, select call service, type fully kiosk and select the load URL service. Select the wall panel from the dropdown and then paste in the URL to the camera view into the box and hit save. Now, whenever the doorbell button is pressed, it should change the active web page on your tablet to be your camera view. We can also add a delay to this automation to wait for a minute and then use the button.press service to call the load start URL service on the tablet, which will make it return to the home screen ready for use. And there we go, that's how to take a tablet and turn it into a wall panel for controlling Home Assistant or other platforms, maybe for guest controls or for displaying useful information with Fully Kiosk. Now we just got to get some time to actually finish my tablet dashboard that I've been meaning to do for ages, but that's for a future video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as always. I hope you find this video useful. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I'll see ya in the next one.